This example where we have a continuous stirred tank reactor that has a cooling jacket, and then we're going to model it as losing cooling at a certain time. The question is, how do we minimize the maximum temperature that it's going to reach? In other words, the control we have in the system is we can increase the flow rate of feed to the reactor, or we can decrease the flow rate. In the simulation, we'll look at doing both of those things and also the time after the cooling is lost that we make that change. This is a simulation done with Mathematica and is available on the Wolfram demonstration project site. The link is indicated here. And so this is an interactive simulation, which means you can go to the site and make changes and observe the behavior. What I'm plotting here is the temperature as a function of time. And the line initially shows what happens when we lose cooling. It was running at steady state. We show just the first six minutes of it running at steady state. We lose cooling. And then once that happens, the temperature rapidly shoots up from about 360 degrees to over 700 degrees. Now, if we adjust the valve at nine minutes, and we have two options. We could decrease the flow into the reactor. And if we were to do that, we cut off, we make no new reactant coming in. We notice the temperature gets even higher as the final temperature. And the reason for this is that some of the temperature control is provided by the colder feed coming in that we're warming up. The detailed numbers are available in the Wolfram site. The other option is to increase the flow. So let's say we increase it, we double it, and it has a pretty small effect. And then you notice there's some point between 9 and 10, which is, of course, much higher flow rate. So you can see the difference between 9 and 10. If we adjust the valve, make the flow rate five times higher, then we instantaneously essentially stop the temperature rise. We control the reactor. We're basically flushing out, decreasing the resonance time for reaction, so having much less reaction taking place. If, on the other hand, I adjust the time, so in this figure, the dash line is that original behavior if I did nothing. So I can adjust the time and I can say, well, we reacted very quickly after just a couple minutes noticing temperature increase, we increased the flow rate. Well, if that's the case, now we don't have to increase the flow rate as much. Here's increasing the flow rate to seven is not enough to stop, but increasing the flow rate to eight is. So, so it's both the time and how high we increase the flow rate. If we wait too long, 10 minutes, then it's not going to matter. We're already at a high flow rate, and all that will do is determine how rapidly we cool it back down. So, one of the things that this demonstration shows is how nonlinear the response is when we have kinetics that have exponential terms for rates of reaction, and then we release a lot of heat from this exothermic reaction. You can go to the Wolfram site and use this demonstration to get a better feeling for how changing one of these variables affects the behavior of the system.